It's an honor to speak at this reception for the international parliamentarians for West Papua. Caroline, thank you for your sterling support. Mr. Berman, thank you for your kind introduction and commitment. You know, lawyers like to talk for a long time, but I only have a few minutes. So I'm going to do two things. I will explain West Papua's status under international law, and then I will mention some implications for the EU and for you as parliamentarians. Today, West Papua is an Indonesian colony. That means that the West Papuan resources, which belong to the peoples of West Papua, are used and exploited by somebody else. Colonialism is illegal under international law. And West Papua has a legal right to be free. This is the most important point. West Papua has a legal right to independence. Not just a moral right, not just a political right, but it has a legal right. Why do I say that? The legal right to self-determination is guaranteed by the United Nations Charter. It's guaranteed under customary international law and incidentally in relation to West Papua. It was guaranteed in a treaty called the New York Agreement which Indonesia signed with the Netherlands. Why do I say West Papua is a colony? Because Indonesia invaded and took over West Papua. Just as Indonesia invaded and took over East Timor. But today, East Timor is free. West Papua is still controlled by Indonesia. The history is important. Indonesia did not exist until 1949. In Indonesia was created from the rebellious territories in the Netherlands East Indies and West Papua was not a part of that independence movement. West Papua chose to remain a Dutch colony. In fact, um, West Papua didn't want to join Indonesia. They weren't even asked. Mohamed Hatta, who was the first um, vice president, said the Papuans are too backward to be allowed to choose. We will take West Papua. And the Netherlands said, no, you will not. In the 1950s, after the Ind Indonesia had joined the United Nations, Indonesia went to the UN General Assembly three times and said West Papua should be part of Indonesia. And three times the General Assembly said no. And in 1960, um, the UN General Assembly adopted something called the Declaration on the Granting of Independence to Colonial Countries and Peoples. And they recognized there that all colonial peoples have the right to, of self-determination. As a colony, West Papua has the right to self-determination. That means independence, integration, or free association. Actually, what West Papuans said they wanted was independence, and they had a legal right to independence. So the Dutch and the Papuans began to prepare West Papua for independence. In 1961, the West Papuans adopted a national anthem and also the national flag, the Morning Star. And, they said, well, the, they called on the rest of the world to respect their right to freedom, their right to self-determination didn't work. In 1962, Indonesia tried to invade West Papua, and the Papuans and the Dutch defeated the Indonesians. That was the end of the, that attempt. But the United States supported Indonesia, and they pressured the Dutch into signing this agreement that I mentioned, a treaty called the New York Agreement, and that forced the Dutch to hand West Papua over to a United Nations temporary authority who then handed it over to Indonesia. What did they hand over? They handed over administration. The Netherlands could not hand over sovereignty because sovereignty belongs to the Papuan people. The UN could not hand over sovereignty because sovereignty rests with the Papuan people. The Indonesians could not acquire sovereignty because it was with the Papuan people. Remember, colonial administration is all we are talking about. So West Papua was not part of Indonesia yet. And Indonesia recognized that West Papua had a right to self-determination. The New York Agreement said, Indonesia, you must hold an act of self-determination. 
And this was done, apparently, in 1969. In 1969, the Indonesians held what they said was the act of self-determination. They called it the act of free choice, whereas Papuans call it the act of no choice. Why? In 1969, there were one million Papuans. Self-determination means a free choice based on universal adult suffrage. Indonesia chose 1,022 Papuans, stuck them in rooms in eight different locations, and forced them to say they wanted to be part of Indonesia. Literally forced them. In some cases, tribal chiefs left their families behind in the care of the government. In other places, um, the generals said, we will shoot anyone who does not agree with us. There was no vote. This is completely illegal. The act of free choice was a sham. It was a fake. It cannot give legal standing to Indonesia's presence in West Papua. It does not legalize Indonesian control of West Papua. So Indonesia's presence in West Papua remains colonial and illegal. And as I said, West Papua has a legal right to be free and independent. This is not a separatist movement. Sometimes it's characterized as a separatist movement. Sometimes it's described as secession. It is not. This is the right to self-determination held by colonial peoples. They are under illegal alien rule. What does this mean for the EU? The European Union is founded on the rule of law. So, if we believe in the rule of law, then EU policy should be consistent with international law. I'm not sure it is at the moment. The Indonesia European Community Strategy Paper for 2007 to 2013 treats West Papua as a separatist conflict like Aceh, like the Malakas. This isn't correct. Aceh and the Malakas were part of Indonesia from the very beginning in 1949. They are legally part of Indonesia, even though they don't like it. West Papua was annexed and colonized 20 years later. EU policy should recognize this difference and recognize a different legal basis for West Papua within Indonesia. It should recognize that this is an illegal colonial situation and perhaps be directed to ending what is an illegal situation. How? Caroline has already given us some of the answers. The first step is to let the Papuans exercise their right to self-determination the indigenous Papuans should have a free vote in a referendum under UN supervision. Secondly, the EU should no longer support autonomy. Autonomy is not self-determination, and it is futile to support it now. It's contrary to West Papua's legal right to self-determination. The only way to have peace in West Papua is to help the Papuans free themselves from alien rule. Thirdly, under international law, where the right to self-determination has been violated, a state is not supposed to recognize the illegal situation or give aid to the wrongdoer. That suggests that Indonesia should not support, that the European Union should not support Indonesia's presence in West Papua. That might mean reviewing current EU policy towards Indonesia and, if necessary, changing that policy to make it consistent with international law. The basis of international law is the preservation of peace. That's why we have international law. The European Union, you, are the only directly elected body in the European Union, this parliament. We ask you, as parliamentarians, to uphold the rule of law for West Papua. Thank you.